I really wish you would stop that. Yeah, dead ass. All right, here comes the music. 85. 85. We're 15 away from a hundo. That's wild. I gotta get a real job. Welcome back, Washed Up Walk-Ons fans. This is episode 85 of the podcast. And similar to 84, we have a pretty cool guest coming on. Uh, I won't give 85 quite the hype that 84 gives or the 84 got. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to introduce this guy. A lot can be said, man. A lot can be said. Me and my man go back. Man, it feels like forever. Long time. And, uh, Hey, don't speak yet because they might know your voice. Shut up. Um, so I'm just going to intro this guy by giving you a totem pole of Mac athletes. So at the bottom, we're going we're gonna to go this guy. And then a little step up, we're going to go with his cousin who was really, really good. And then a step up from that, we're going to go like Pat Anger. And then a step up from that, call it David Johnson. Mm. But, you know, that, you know, it's a decent list that this guy makes his, his way onto. Uh, so I would just like to introduce the bottom of the Mac totem pole, good athletes, and my son, Jake Gervas. What's up, Bulls? Okay. And first of all, no. No. Okay, I'm done. I, you I don't, don't come onto this podcast and just start <laughs> saying words in a different accent than, than they're normally said. All right, that's my bad. It won't happen again. Where did that come from? Ah, uh, I don't know. But. but it really is good to have you on, dude, because I've been trying to get this for a long time, and for a long time you were scared. But uh, now you got a, a year in the National Football League under your belt, and you're a little bit less scared. Um, so now it's good. It's a good time to have you on. And hold have on you? a sec. Yeah, and hold on a second. I'd like to introduce a second guest to the show, our very own Kevin Ward. He's been he's been uh, striker actually abducted him, took him somewhere. By the looks of it, on the video, if you if you're watching the video version, subscribe on Patreon. Kevin looks like the 36 year old dad whose eight year old son struck out three times in the same baseball game, all to a curveball by some opposing kid who just throws heat and junk that can't be touched. And now Kevin has to take his son home and talk to him about how he's a disappointment to the family athletically. Kevin Ward, welcome back to your own show. How you doing? Hey man, happy to be back. It's uh, it's been it's, it's been a while. It's uh, you know, the kid he struck out sometimes, but guess what? That kid that struck him out is gonna have Tommy John surgery at 15, and by 18 he's gonna be a walk on, and by 22 he's gonna be a team captain on a D1 team. So it's gonna be all good. All right, okay. Anyway, Jake, back to back to you. Um, you you did just finish a year in the NFL, which is so much further than us three ever got combined. How has Jake Gervas been? in the time since leaving the Iowa Hawkeye program? Been good, you know. Just uh, wasn't really expecting to make it too far when I did the whole pro day NFL route. We weren't expecting you to get very far either. I don't think many people – But look where we are at. Somehow, some way, I just keep fooling everybody. Dude, you're so white. I don't know how. It's crazy. Hey, listen, man. You just – you got in there and you worked hard and – uh, you, you fooled them somehow, we, some way. Yeah, we. Uh, so to those listening, this guest episode interview may may go a little differently. 
Gervas and us three have probably a better relationship than most uh, of the guests that we're going to bring on. So we're going to mm. throw, we're going to throw some jabs more than normal. Uh, oh, definitely way, we're going to talk way more shit than me and Drake would have dared talk to Tristan um, earlier in the day when we recorded with him. But see, oh. the thing about it is that that's only because I want to punch Jake in the face way more than I want to punch Tristan. Wow. Uh, I don't know anyone on the planet who would think, you know, punching Tristan in the face would be a smart thing to do. Or yeah, I'd be in trouble. I'd be a dumb idea. idea. Jake, oh, you. I wouldn't put it past Drake to figure yeah, it out. Yeah, Drake's, Drake's nah. pretty stupid, though, nah, so he man. would do it. Nah. I, I mean, not me. No. Tristan, hands up, don't shoot, man. Hands up, don't shoot. Yeah, Jake, boy, you. Man, where, where do you guys even want to start with Jake? I mean, I. Let's start all the way back. At ass umption high school listen nights. listen 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 he, this is the guy who went to the trash school because he Still wanted to be the, he wanted to be the star when he could have gone to bettendorf or pleasant valley hmm. in reality but we never lost to bettendorf in the three years we played him when i was there so that's that's something you can't say for sure Ooh. no i lost to him once for sure yeah I mean, we never did. Okay. And also put a put a whooping on the muskie's ass once or twice. Listen to me. Listen to me. It, it was not a whooping. We we beat them my senior year. Because I broke it off. They got us a little bit. But who got who? Who got who? You got me, but I, be, I got you junior year. Your junior year. We're talking about high school, and you're literally in the NFL right now. Yeah, but – it doesn't get much better. Yeah, but listen, football. the high school is what actually matters. <laughs> and he's, not wrong. he's not wrong. I Sorry. gave him his first concussion. So when he gets CTE and is drooling on himself, his wife is going to call me and be like, you know what, Drake? This is all your fucking fault because you started this. That's actually exactly what Haley sounds like. That was very good. Don't, make, don't mock my lady friend. <laughs> Kevin, it, I mean, this you- is all the way in like – 20 years and by the way speaking of the lady friend there's a wedding coming up it, it is it'll be here before we know it it's fast approaching and that's july, exciting july 11th your your life has really taken off in the past two years jake some, some stuff has happened it, it, it's changed quite a bit but i'm excited about it let's accelerate the normal story that we do we usually kind of like oh how'd you get to iowa I mean, we'll talk about it, um, but we want to get all the way through your your for your rookie season. So, talk about um, quickly your recruiting to Iowa, how it, you know, your other opportunities coming out of high school, and then yep. kind of like into Iowa City. Um, so out of high school, I basically I, I wasn't really recruited at all. So basically, I had I talked to you and I at Illinois State, and then I'd I'd applied to some Ivy League schools and oh. Ivy League. All the schools at Harvard and Yale said, hey, if you get a 26 in your ACT, you're in. We got a spot for you. You're on the team. Because they don't give out scholarships in the Ivy League, right? So I got – no. Took, yeah, they don't give out so scholarships. So who's more, who's more Ivy League between Gervas and Kevin? Kevin. Because if they, Kevin. like, both sit close to the camera, they're about identical. Yeah, they kind of look like each other. Kevin. I'm not that ugly, am I? Oh, wow. Either of you look Ooh. great. Wow. Kevin, wow. what do you have to I say? I had the opportunity to go to Yale, so, I mean – I guess that's Coach Vashel. Yep. Yep. Kevin, good dude, yeah, right? yeah. He was a great dude. He was a good dude. But they both said, uh, get a 26, you're in, took a prep course, blah, blah, blah. Long story, short, long story short, I call them up, like, hey, I got a 28. They're both like, all right, you're good. Like, we'll send you something in a couple of days. Now I just don't hear from either of them. Wow. So I end up calling them back, and they're like, who are you? Yeah, we both of them said we end up going a different route. So Ivy League's off the table. Yikes. Then Illinois State and you and I, who were like saying, we're going to give you this money, blah, 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 you can come. I like messaged them. They're both like, yeah, it's, we, went, we went a different route. You could walk on here. <laughs> a lot of different hey, routes hey, happening. Hey, listen, <laughs> your boss, you take, take all the opportunity you want to mushroom stamp Farley. Oh, yeah. I mean, I wasn't a fan of his anyway, so I'm glad I never went that route. But then uh, I had one offer from Air Force, and they called me like, yeah, we're going to offer you. I'm like, all right, this is sick. I'm going to go out there on Monday. Dude, like, me- huh? 
you, you're like this is literally like my fucking recruiting trail. Like you know, yeah, like you just I follow just, me around the map. You just, just, you, you just want to be me so badly, don't you? <laughs> Uh, I mean, I'm doing all right. Kevin has told the story of how Air Force was his only other offer, and he was gonna—he was 100% in that he was gonna go drop freedom bombs on the ice <laughs> on the ISIS regime. Well, Kevin would have fit in very well at Air Force, but I didn't get the opportunity because they did a medical ba- background. Did they go a different route. Yeah, it went a like, different route because and I they had found food out that you're a pussy. No, it was nothing <laughs> about that. It was they found out I had food allergies, <laughs> so I get a call and they're like, "Yeah, we." We gotta pull your scholarship. So I you got you got your you're like food allergic food. to peanuts or something. What I'm allergic, does he have food allergies? I'm allergic to onions, so they pulled my scholarship. <laughs> <laughs> what? Ended up ended up walking on at the University of Iowa, and it was the best decision of my life. <laughs> <laughs> that's maybe yeah. the best. Isn't that bullshit though? <laughs> that's maybe the best story that's ever been told. And, and onions the most random thing oh. ever i never knew you were allergic to onions i didn't either <laughs> so trash they just pulled it like i was supposed to go on an official on a monday and they called me on sunday like yeah like we can't have you out of here because you can't clear our medical stuff so you're done that's oh, unbelievable oh so rattled so was, so you called guys yeah. like, i'm fucking rattled <laughs> right i'm rattled right now so oh, you man. so you're so literally at this point you're like fuck i only can walk on in iowa i hope this one works out yeah. and the only reason that happened was because coach morgan as you all know legend one legend. of the most legendary coaches in iowa he coached my high school coach when my high school coach was in high school so he he coached him in high school so that was only connect. That was the reason I even got a walk on was because they had, they had that connection. And Coach Morgan came to my high school a couple of times and probably saw me beat up on Drake's ass once or twice, and then they offered me a for walk on. Well, there you go. And I had no other option, so I just I said, all right, that's I'm gonna so go to you, Iowa. You call- who broke your arm, Jake? Just for measure. <sighs> who broke your arm, Jake? I don't remember, Drake. You don't. Uh, so now you're alive. It was. <sighs> hey, do you not remember? Because the year prior, I knocked you out. Actually. Who won that game? Who got beat by a shitty sophomore quarterback that weighed 145 pounds? Jake, if you could flash a just a, Feels bad. a deposit of him next year. your it's weekly rough. paycheck from this last season, you could shut the whole the whole conversation up right here. Um, the uh, finished. Yeah, you got the mic. So you called. So you called Coach Morgan or Coach Ferentz up and said, "Hey." Hopefully there's not any different routes happen, and I'd like to play for the Hawkeyes. They, they stuck with their route. So they ended up bringing me on, like, you know, the it's an official visit, but it's, like, just the walk-ons yeah, right. that are there. Yeah, we, were there. Kev, we were all we there. there. We were all there. It was the best weekend of probably their whole recruiting. Oh, yeah. They got, me, they got me, Brandon Bishop. Uh, okay, so I hosted Bishy. Who was your host? Riley McCarron. Okay. Oh, we got after it too. Where did we go? <laughs> where did we go that weekend? We went. I'm gonna we assume us. that there was some union in there. I went to. Uh, no, I didn't think I made it to the bar. So we went to a house party at. Yes, we did. Yes, George we did. And, George and CJ's at uh, Miller. <laughs> no, we yeah. went to a different house party. Sounds about right. Oh, uh, uh, maybe night one, but one night we went to 8:30 Miller. Oh my God! I was lights out on the beer pong table. Eight thirty Miller needs to be wiped off the map. Eight eight <laughs> no, Miller needs to be. They made some changes. Apple. Yeah, have you guys seen the Snapchats from it Brady? Looks it good. looks good. The place looks inhabitable now. It does. Yeah, it's no, ridiculous. That we went there that night, and then I don't think I even made it downtown. I think uh, had got after a little bit too much and went back to the old Hilton Hotel and packed it in. But it was a great visit. Wow. All right, so now and so and so the Javas Eagle lands in Iowa City. Oh, and, injured, injured. Yeah, and I met him, and I met Javas outside of high school at the uh, student athlete kickoff tailgate, which we all hated being at, except for all it did was that it marked the end of camp, which isn't always the worst thing, obviously. But uh, yeah, Javas was in his sling and shit, and I was just looking at him like. Man, this kid's gonna last a week. Yeah, I was like, "Good <laughs> luck, kid." Is really like kind of what I thought. I had the <laughs> swing. I had here the long, we are, dude. I, I thought you were blonde hair. I thought oh. you were such a fairy, dude. I thought such like, a fairy. Who the hell is this the Justin fairy that Bieber came in, in the sling? I was like, "Oh man, this kid doesn't stand a chance." No so, chance. So yeah, come in injured, and my surgeon, my surgeon on my shoulder did it. He was back in Davenport, 
So like they wouldn't let me work out or anything when I first got here until that doctor cleared me. So like every morning I'm, I'm texting or I'm asking coach Joel, like, Hey, when can I start lifting with the freshman? When can I start doing stuff in practice? Blah, blah, blah. Right. He's like, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. So we're like three weeks in. I haven't done anything yet. So Sam Franks is my roommate. I get a call from him at like six 30 in the morning. He's like, dude, you're supposed to be here for FMS. I'm like, I still don't really know anybody yet. I'm like, what are you talking about? I was like, your, your name's on the sheet. You were supposed to be here. So I rush over to the, to, uh, to, uh, to the old complex. And I remember walking, it was like the whole freshman class was in there. Oh. Do you have anxiety right now? Thank oh my God, my heart drops. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I'm on the verge of tears. And he, 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 I walk in, he tells me, where have you been? I'm like, you know, I, I didn't think I was coming to this stuff yet. He's like, your name's on the sheet. I'm like, yeah, I just, I didn't know. He's like, take your shirt off. He <laughs> takes my body fat in front of everybody. By this point, I've been pounding Gatorade shakes, not working out, but those little metal shakes that we saw. Oh, the original. So much. Yeah. The my body, best. So good. I got up to like 210. I think my body, my body fat was like 26. Oh my God. <laughs> in front of the whole freshman class, dude. I remember he's like, how old are you? I'm like 18. He's like, you need to start acting like it. And that was my introduction to like all my classmates, to the strength staff. And then I had to push the wood after with a messed up shoulder and a bad hip. And I, I almost quit that day. <laughs> oh my God. Dude, it, it was a tough first couple months here. I hated it. That's what insane. a story, uh, man. That's a. Oh. And do you guys remember the old weight room had the plug ins in the ground? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Shit, I yeah. pushed the wood. I would hit that and just like, fall forward on my face and i remember like <laughs> sam brinks parker hesse they're all sitting there like making those old shakes you'd have to make yep. for yourself put some applesauce in and there they're just looking at me like this poor guy and i'm like pushing the wood with tears in my eyes like getting ready to pack my bags and get the hell out of dodge wow that was my introduction Man. to Iowa football it was it was a rough start boys uh so pu- uh, quick anecdote P- pushing the wood was <sighs> a it's a it's a a punishment it's 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 more embarrassment it is no no it's not more embarrassment it hurts bad yeah but it's embarrassing but it hurts bad it's, it's demeaning for sure you get a two by four except for it's not like a long ass two by four it's like a two foot long piece of wood it's a wood plank and you put it down on the ground and a weight room floor is rubber flooring and so that thing don't just go too well and you just push it from one side of the room to the other until they tell you not to push it anymore. And there are a few guys who pushed the wood around a little bit. Mm. Some did it several times. Never had to, but that was my, that was I can't old. believe they made you push it with a hurt shoulder. And a bad hip. I messed up my hip in baseball. I had a, I had a bad, like, not a hernia, but I, I had hip flexor area. And I pushed it down and back probably 20 times. And I, you know, that was my introduction to Iowa football. And I, I was this close to quitting. Wow. So damn shame you didn't. (laughs) So you got through it. How was that first? So how was that first camp then? Was it like, I didn't go to that camp. Oh, okay. I wasn't, I wasn't, you you didn't put the pads on until bull prep that year. Not even the pads. I, I could not I, 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 I could not get you off my hip because you asked me about a billion questions about every single drill we did. And I was like, dude, gotcha. what have you been fucking watching all year? I was, tr- I was trying to learn from my fellow white safety. I know, but I was like, at the same time, dude, like, you, have you not been watching practice for the past three months? You know how Kevin is. I know. I was, I was not a very good person. <laughs> Kevin was still leader. a safety at this time. And as I mean, literally – the dad of Jake Gervas, basically the mentor for that first two, one, two years. I mean, for the were, first five years, he just did. Nah, 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 not five years, boys. I'll give him a year or two. Who's daddy, Jake? Who's daddy? Definitely not you anymore. <laughs> You're the one paying me rent. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Boy. That was kind of a mic drop. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Who's the one that begged me to move in? I did. I oh, wanted shit. Kevin to move in for the, with the boys. And it's because you really – you love each other, right? Yeah, no, Kevin, Kevin was, he was, I'm not going to call him my daddy, but he was a good mentor for the first couple of years. I mean, I didn't know what tempo one was and I would ask him every, every day in meetings, what the calls and checks were. And he was the smartest guy in the room and he helped me out. So I, I, still I appreciate don't know what that. That, that always stood true. Kevin was always the smartest guy in the room. 
that's sometimes for better, sometimes for worse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, so you made it eventually, when did you crawl out of the shit? When did you feel like, okay, I'm, I'm going to be good here? Uh, probably. I mean, be good. What do you mean by be good? Like you didn't want to quit anymore. You like the, like, the, yeah, the like, point where like, you feel like you kind of like established a, like a little bit of a presence in the program. Like you, okay. Like I fit in here. Like I can, I can, I can work here. You've for grasped me, was, the daily stuff for me. I think it was after my first spring ball. Um, you know, you get the lay of the land and you start taking some reps. You're like, okay. Yeah. I think I can play here. Like, so yeah, like, I would, what, what, I would say it's pretty similar. Either first spring ball or my first camp, which would have been my second year there. Yeah. Was when I thought I had an idea, like a, a chance, and I definitely thought I'd fit in. But oh man, I got another funny story if you want it. Oh, yes. we want them all, dude. I love this laughing. Is, this is uh I forget if this is this is either my first this is either my first spring ball or my second spring ball. I want to say it was probably this, second. If, before I, before you start. If this is anything as good as the onion story, this is undisputed best episode of all time. Yeah, I just got if it. this story is as good it's, as onions, it's pretty good. It's just, bad. just tell it. You have the floor. It's uh, so it's spring ball. I'm like finally starting to get some reps. I want to say this is probably my first spring ball. For, so the first time I was put on pads, been there at all, and uh, finally get some some reps. We we head into the spring game. And I remember it was like right before heading out, I'm texting my parents. I'm like, hey, we're walking out. And just so like they could, you know, see us in the line or whatever. And uh, as of course, as I'm doing that, Coach Parker walks by, (laughs) sees me on my phone in the locker room, which is a huge no-no for him. He's like, you know what? What the fuck are you doing? Why are you on your phone? Put it away. (laughs) That's a great. I love that. You know, Coach Parker, all mistakes tie back to something, right? (laughs) So later in the spring game, I'm getting some reps. It is – Oh my god! I think I know what you're talking about. You you know? I absolutely know. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't. Wait. <laughs> We're getting some reps, and uh, it's tempo one, three by one. I give a Mustang call, and I don't take George Kittle ver- vertical. He number three goes vertical. The free safety from the backside takes him. Whatever it is, don't take him vertical. He catches it for like 25 yards. Whatever. A couple of plays later, we give it a cover three call. And I'm the deep middle of the field safety, and we're in the red zone. So it's kind of a silly call in the red zone to call a cover three, right? Well, I think I do a normal cover three drop. I think I'm all right, and blah, blah, blah. Um, so then <laughs> we, we finish the scrimmage. I know. <laughs> we, finish, we finish the scrimmage, and Coach Parker brings up the whole defense and says, I got my free safety on his phone before, and he won't take a tight end vertical in this dumb mama. Mm. Rips my ass in front of everybody, right? I'm like, all right, that sucked, but I'll be okay. So <laughs> next go, day in meetings. Next day in the, meetings. Get off the field. Next day in this meetings. This is the best thing ever. In front of the entire defense. Whole, whole defense. I'm, I am like, all right, the Mustang call comes up. I'm like, yeah, I should have taken a vertical, made a mistake, first reps, blah, blah, blah. Then he pulls up the, the cover three call on the red zone. <laughs> and he goes, pulls it up, plays it, rewinds it, plays it, rewinds it. He goes, any, anybody no, notice anything here? Anything? Anybody <laughs> notice anything about this clip? And Jordan Lomax is up in the front, you know, senior captain, starting free safety, guy I'm trying to learn from. He goes, yeah, we – defense is 10 guys in the field right now. <laughs> Turns out your boy had backpedaled out of the end zone <laughs> out by the goal post. We only got 10 fucking guys on the field right now. <laughs> oh, man. Kevin remembers in meeting. I'm just sitting there just like this, like, I'm the new guy on campus. Nobody knows who I am, and I backed off the fucking field <laughs> in a football game. We're in a live scrimmage. <laughs> and I remember he – I ripped my ass. Everybody's just like, you know, we can't have this, blah, blah, blah. And then he finds me like two days later in the cafeteria. Is like, you know, I, I didn't mean to call you out, but I just needed to stress that. And I, that was another point. That was probably the second point. I was, I was like, you know, maybe I can't do this. Maybe it's time for me to <laughs> – <laughs> retire from the old game of football and call it a day but that that was a that was another low point where i wasn't sure if i was gonna be able to make it in this program uh good old public shaming you gotta yeah. love it. I, see i and remember he tied it back and he tied it back to since i was on my phone before oh, the scrimmage yeah it i was, can he- yeah i can back. hear coach parker saying this stupid motherfucker he got- oh dude dude i remembered the ending to that story part way through it Dude, how did you backpedal off the field? I was fatigued. I, 
it was a cover three in the red zone. You know, was, as Doyle said, says, when you get tired, your fundamentals break down. Like it was just a – He was off. playing deeper than the deepest, man. He I wasn't was getting beat deep. That's the answer. Right. It's deep. a new rule. It's a new rule deeper than the field goal. No, I wasn't getting beat deep. I could guarantee you that. He uh, just – if if Coach Parker really thinks they're gonna run like a middle seam, they just or like a post, he's just gonna call Gervas coverage. Dude, and then he would like every year, every year he would pull it up once in camp. He would pull it up <laughs> my senior year. He pulled up my senior year and like to all these young guys, he's like, Look how far this guy's come. Like <laughs> his dumbass couldn't be on the field, blah, blah, blah. Like he was good for it once a year of, of showing that clip. But it was that was my low point. To be fair, he didn't do that only to you. Like he did that to like all like the pros. Oh. Like who were, like when Micah Hyde was like going off, he'd pull up old clips of him. He's like, look at this dumb fucker. He didn't know how to play. D. He didn't know how to line up. Mm-hmm. Everybody kind he of, does it to everybody. Kind of kind of touting himself. He's like, yeah, I mean, this guy didn't know shit about shit. Now he's fucking me making Jim, millions yeah. of dollars. Jim Thorpe, all American yeah. stud. Yeah, I mean, uh, as we've said, Parker's a goat. He, he is. He oh, is. for sure. The man was born to teach people how to play defense in the game of football and he does a really good job at it he does he, been doing it for a long time this is pretty much a phil parker love podcast yeah oh, we stroke him pretty good here uh <laughs> man i mean i i i hate to go over like the normal storyline of like what we usually do here because there's so much with your boss it's probably gonna end up being like a second or third episode that we need to really get everything out but then I guess just take us through about that point. You get through there, you know, you go through your second season, your redshirt sophomore or your redshirt freshman year. And then like – Which year some, was the Rose Bowl? Rose Bowl was redshirt freshman. So that would have like, been that year. Well, yeah, was, I mean, at least at least you can be thankful you didn't quit because you just went to the Rose Bowl. Yeah, that was a good time. I didn't, I didn't get a step on the field with, with the Bulls, but uh, I was on the roster. Done you know? that. Okay, and again with the word – with the word uh, yeah. talk about let's get to the point where you finally it's probably that next year I believe yeah it would have been our fourth year your third year where the savage back makes an appearance on special teams and you start to get some playing time what what was that like uh talk about because as much as like shit we're gonna shit talk you and the guy the people who've listened have heard you are probably one of the examples that coach Doyle talks about a lot KF probably brings you up a fair amount now in the program as well. Walk on kid Mm -hmm. from Iowa, you know, the story that you just told, and then all of a sudden you're on the field. Talk about that mentality and the, and the work ethic and the grind to to get reps. Yeah. It was a, just like, just like all you guys, you know, your first couple of years, you're not expecting to play, but once you, once you start getting the mix of things, they'll start with special teams and you try to get on the depth chart and then climb from there. So uh, it was that redshirt sophomore year. Um, Jordan Lomax graduated, compete, trying to compete for a starting safety job. Um, didn't end up getting that, but, you know, started in all four phases of special teams, which was – it was a start. It wasn't where I wanted to be, but to be a, a fellow savage back with the man, Kevin Ward, was a, was a good, uh, you know, good place to start. And I knew it wasn't the end goal, but it, was, it definitely felt good, you know, getting back on the field, um, competing and being in all four phases of special teams for that would have been 20, 2016 year. Yep. Yep. So that was a good start. And then I knew going into the next year, um, you know, the guy that was playing in front of me was the same age, but I was just going to have to, you know, keep working, um, keep grinding, doing things the right way. And at some point, one way or another, get an opportunity. Uh, got that opportunity, which would have been your your guys' senior year. Yep. During the spring. Um, had a decent little spring game where the defense kicked the, kicked the shit out of the offense. And then uh, – yeah, and then get got to start that that 2017 year to kick off the year. Didn't you go off? I did. Hey Jake, your, your, your laundry's done. Yeah, your laundry's done. I just heard that one. Thanks. The <laughs> now you're in the league. You still do your own laundry, or? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm pa- I got pack it up, heading to Florida tonight, so I had to do a quick load. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Uh, you was that the spring game that like you went off? You had like three picks or something yeah. stupid. Yeah. Okay, we won't talk about that. Yeah, but that was the first annual crawfish boil, which is arguably my best, the best oh. weekend in Iowa City I've ever had. Dude, <laughs> that was, Friday we night. don't, 
We don't need to tell all those stories. Oh, spring game that first like annual. The boys went out and then the crawfish boil on that Saturday at your guys' house too. Yeah, yeah. That, the, 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 the Paulsons, man, they did it up good. They they came with the idea. It was like, hey, let's, let's just have a crawfish boil, celebrate the end of spring ball. There's literally no better day the, of the year is when oh. the boys all decide to celebrate the end of spring ball. The, the, the feeling of spring ball ending is arguably the best feeling it's, you it, can get it, it is arguably better than you know like winning a game winning the big 10 west going to, like it was pretty and, fucking good yeah. boys spring, and you knew it came every year eventually yeah spring spring ball is the season for no reason and everybody just hates that five weeks of <laughs> i mean there might have been a time where mark wiseman left his house in the hands of three walk-on freshman football players while he went downtown and those three walk-on football players might have been Kevin Ward, the one called Manders, and myself. And we were very confused at why Mark and Macon Pleva were leaving their house in our hands. But we took full advantage of it. Oh, for sure. And that was the night of the spring ball game, our first spring ball. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Kevin, he was, like, I, really cool. he was like really cool with it. He's like, oh, you're staying here? Sweet. <laughs> yeah, he was like, awesome. <laughs> Sick. He's all about it. Kevin, are you holding a Dunkin' Donuts gift card in your hand? Uh, no, no, I'm just playing around with my credit cards. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh. You play around with credit cards fairly often. Strikers should be exact. The, so, so you finally, you get on the field. That was, like you said, your redshirt junior season, <clears throat> last season. Yep. You finally make it and you start getting reps at safety. And then you started at safety just your senior year or did you play? No. So, so I started, um, first, first, First game of the year against Wyoming in your guys' senior year. Had a okay. really good game. Played well. Yeah, yeah. Infamous double move up in Ames, Iowa, where your boy bit hard. You guys <laughs> the double move wasn't great. Got beat on that. Double move wasn't great, but, I mean, could have had some help there by somebody <laughs> else. But your boy got exposed and uh, ended up getting benched the following game for a couple games, uh, which was tough. But probably in the long run, one of the better things that happened to me in my football career. And then uh, – I think I started the last seven games of that year and then okay. my whole senior year. How was senior year and making it to that? It's like a coveted season, right? So mm -hmm. the we just talked about it with Tristan. And for those that listen to the Tristan podcast, if you haven't, we talked about his decision to go into the league. And his biggest thing was on his goals every year was to make it to senior day and to have his mom out on the field and – you know, he for went that he for went. That's not a word. He Chose decided to forego. Decided to forego that decision and obviously go make a little money. But forgonded. Forgonded, yeah. <laughs> uh, Wakanda forever. He didn't get to experience that, but the reason that's so special to people is because it's so touted, highly touted by KF and Doyle as as just an elite group of people to make that senior year. Uh, talk about that and just finally making it to the end of the program and how how Iowa really changed you as a man and molded you molded me um yeah it was it was awesome you know going into senior year um I based off of what had happened in the past I never felt like I was locked in as a starter you know just kind of in that back of your mind so it's it's That's a good that walk on mentality man it is yeah it's a good and bad thing because it can mess with your confidence but it also like keeps you hungry which is a good thing so um, going into senior year, knew we had a good good group of guys, really talented team, and it, you know, was a year that kind of could have been a special year. Um, had some ups and downs a, as a team, but you know, I, I felt like I was playing some really good football. Um, and uh, you know, getting to senior day is special because I think my class probably started with twenty eight guys, twenty seven, twenty eight guys. It's usually around then, and for senior day, we only had thirteen guys, you know, from our class. Um, we lost, you know, we lost Miles Taylor and Ben didn't red shirt and the Josh Jackson entered the draft early. Well, other than that, between our, our freshman class of close to 30 guys, only, only 12, 12 or 13 of us made it to senior day. So it's, it's definitely something special. It was really cool. Like you said, you know, run out in the field, um, meeting your parents at midfield, a lot of work, a lot of time, not just with, not just, you know, by yourself, but with a great group of guys. And it was, it was special to finish on a, on a high note and Canik our senior year with the, uh, Good old Miguel Racinos knocking down a, a game winner at home to, to seal that last game. 
Dude, our kickers love kicking game winners against Nebraska. It's so incredible. <laughs> Which I don't know. I don't know, Jake, if you listen to the Miguel Racinos episode, but he minutes before that kick pissed his pants. That's what I heard. That blows my mind. Yeah, and then he went out and <laughs> smoked one through. Just drilled it. Just the Just big a, leg. I, I didn't even watch. I was too scared to watch. The long leg Latino oh, came man. through for the Hawkeyes. I'll tell you what it feels like uh, to lose on your senior day, Jake, and it's bad. 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 Spade. Uh, it's a triple bad from the walk-ons. We so did, we lost to we lost to Purdue. Oh man, that was a bad game. Yeah, that was a really bad game. And secondary, I doubt secondary. Yeah, I was gonna say I doubt Coach Parker was real happy after that week as well. Oh, it was the same thing my senior year. We, I mean, <clears throat> we got that dude from Purdue drafted like three rounds earlier than you probably. <laughs> they just put his our game up on his highlight team. Literally, that was we we had a couple block. I mean, the loss to Purdue my senior year is bad, too. We, Frick, I don't want to talk about it, but yeah. Tough times. Tough times. There are some tough times. There are some good times, too. You, what, what's, what are some of your favorite memories? What's your favorite game? Favorite just Outback overall? Outback Bowl. Out, the Outback Bowl beating Mississippi State? Yeah, I mean, that was just – I couldn't have asked for it to go on any better besides dropping a pick that I should have caught. Hit you right in the face, dude. Right, it's right in the face. Didn't was you get one? I don't want to hear your excuses. I was beat for a touchdown. The dude dropped it, and I picked it off. Yeah, <laughs> in front you. of in front of uh, I had like eighty right in front of your fan section. There, like yeah. eighty five family and friends at that game to end to end their career in the black and gold. Because you have oh, a – yeah, that's pretty. That's what? pretty interesting. It was. I've got a picture where it's got me like. Just before I catch the pick and, like, my whole family's in the background, it's pretty sick. That's insane. Yeah, was, that, that, was, that ended your career as a Hawkeye. That's just a storybook moment. That, that, that ended my career as a Hawkeye. I, th- I thought it was, to be honest, I thought it was going to be my last my last time ever putting on some pads and strapping up. But uh, if it we, was, if that was the case, I would have been. it would have been a good way to end it. Yeah, we were damn sure of it, too. We, are, we had the fourth <laughs> seat to this podcast already open. <laughs> Dude, I already had a spot lined up for you. You were going to be my associate, and then you decided to fuck everything up. Not uh, cool, you can't blame me. So let's talk about that. Let's roll into there. You obviously, <clears throat> as, a, as a guy who makes it to that fifth year, never going to pass up the opportunity to train with the one and only Coach Doyle and your brothers for an extra three, four months in mm-hmm. Iowa City, especially in, in our case, me and Kevin's case no school there was no responsibility it was, was just on the opposite spectrum of that boys yeah you, so for you it was different but kevin and i literally woke up you trained, played Fortnite. trained at 9 30 every morning and then came home and played Fortnite until for we went to 14 sleep. hours yeah i re- i remember it was you josie kevin ike ike best it spring good, it was a good few months boys oh <laughs> best semester God. ever can't get much better than that. Yeah, it didn't end up well for two out of the four that you mentioned. Uh, you're talking to him. But and you could say it ended up as expected. Yeah, as expected. You ran that race, and, and you trained in Iowa City for Pro Day. Take us through that spring and kind of yeah. the thought process of where you were at in life and what you were trying to really get out of that whole situation. Yeah, uh, so for a long time, I wasn't planning on training at all. I was planning on finishing senior year, finishing grad school. And, you know, hanging up the cleats. But then, you know, senior year, it kind of felt like I was I was getting better, playing better football, um, and figured I would probably regret if I didn't give it a shot. So that spring, I was like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to train, give everything I got. And I was also in 15 hours of grad school. So that was that was not a fun time for that. Good 15 hours. Yeah, because I, I had to take – if I wanted to – if I didn't finish that spring, I knew I wasn't going to come back. So I – in my mind, I was like, I'm either going to just drop out or I'm going to take 15 credits, finish, and graduate. So I, I took the 15 credits that spring while I was training and, and finished grad school. Um, but, no, pr- the training was so fun. You guys know, like, once you're, once you're in that position, um, workouts are more laid back. Coaches are more laid back. It's just – you're just lifting weight and trying to run fast with your boys, which is super fun. So that was, that was a fun couple of months. And then pro day, pro day came around, felt really good. Um, felt like I was kind of in the best shape of my life and, you know, went out on pro day and did everything I, I could have done. Um, and if you look at it a couple months later, it, it must not have been enough cause I didn't have many, many options, but, uh, no pro day was super fun and went well. 
Go for it, Cam. I saw your mouth open. Oh, I just burped. Oh, okay. I thought you were gonna say something, add value to the podcast, but no, I, I should never count. Yeah, I should never count on you for that. No, I don't, yeah, the, I'll better. No, so won't. here's how the story went for what me. What I've gotten from Jake Gervas's football story is just the I almost quit story over and over again. Yeah, I mean, somebody rises from the dead. I almost you're, quit. You're rises a fucking from Phoenix, the fucking man. Ashes. Yeah, but I don't know. I say that. I don't know if I ever could have quit. You know what I mean? It's yeah. Just like you get to that, the point I know that. Everybody's been there. Yeah. The – you run that race. Pro Day happens. It's awesome. You feel special. You got the name on your special Pro Day gear. Yep. All the guys, the, there's, you know, 30 to 40 scouts there, coaches, and you feel good. What in your – like, in your mind – did you expect to get a call? Had you was it, had anyone like called and talked, like asked for your draft day info? Was there like what was what was? Some I was of that? Get, I was getting some some nibbles. Like I, I probably talked to leading up to draft day. I probably talked to five teams. Okay, and it's and they were the basic name number where yep. you're gonna be. It wasn't anything in depth. It right. wasn't finding out if I'm a you know high character guy or any of that stuff. It was the the bear of the bear. Um, were contract. the Rams one of those teams? Nope. <laughs> so nope. draft draft comes along. Oh, worst thing ever. Would you think your name was gonna get called? No, but <laughs> day I I had no no of course not. It was just a long day of just waiting, right? Uh, uh, the third day. The third day, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had no intention of getting called ever getting getting my name called. I did have an intention of. I Kidding. thought I'd put out some good film. I thought I'd perform well in pro day. I was like, I'm going to get – I think I'll get signed as an undrafted free agent. To make right? a – yeah, to try and make a camp. Yeah, I, th- I thought I would have some options to sign as an undrafted free agent as soon as, like, the seventh round ends. Just blank. Just nothing on the old cell phone. Hey, guys. Been there. Similar. <laughs> similar. <laughs> Been there. Tough, tough boys. So, gosh – you're bringing it, yeah. You're bringing out some feelings because I had kept it hurts. Kept looking at my phone too because I had two teams contact me, same stuff, and I thought oh, I started for four years. You get never, never threw one over anybody's head. Thank you, Cornbrath, for being six seven, <laughs> Minnesota, twenty fourteen. Check the tape. Uh, and I thought, man, I think you know Casey is in the league. Mm-hmm. I thought, I think I got a shot. And nobody ever came knocking down this door. Kevin got a, like a regional tryout with the Bears, I think. Yay. And Drake was literally a wounded rabbit for – Don't call me a rabbit. That is respectful <laughs> as fuck. Drake, how many – Drake, did, little ass. Drake, did I beat you in bench reps at Pro Day? Uh, I got seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, I just so all three of us. <laughs> what a low dig there! I'm just kidding, Drake. I got 22. I me got two. seven. Yeah, Kevin beat me by two or one or two, whatever it was. I got 22. That's right, because I wanted to go for Jordan. And I was one short. Yeah, I got 22 as well. So, so I just want to claim the record for the. Best pro day ever the Monday before actual pro day. Yeah. Balled out. I just moved pro day up a week. I balled the fuck out. <laughs> now, now, Drake, now, there's an asterisk next yeah. to that, you know. Now, Drake. <laughs> now, Drake. No. <laughs> well, I, get, why you just... I get what you guys are getting at. Now, Drake, were you clean? Were you clean, Drake? Fifth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> played the fifth. You played the fifth on that one. All right. Uh, so, so then what's it like, Jake? What, how long did you wait? Um, yeah, so that night I ended up getting a call from the Oakland Raiders. Oh, that's it, a badass one at least. Well, you would think, but, like, w- when I first thought I was talking to, like, the DB coach, it was, like, the – Great guy, but he was like, like a step above like the the janitors. Like, he, <laughs> like they had the they had the 
the DB film breakdown guy call you? It, it might have been. Hey, like, I know, I know, y'all have an exact guy at Iowa in mind. If yeah, we're not all we thinking about the exact same dude, I'll be shocked. Oh yeah, I know exactly what you're talking. About. Yeah, but so I get get a call from him. He's like, "We love to bring you out." I'm like, "Yeah, man. Like, I got no other option, so I'm there. Like, count me in. I'm gonna go to your rookie mini camp tryout, and I'm gonna try to get signed." And went there, played well, but they weren't. I think they signed one guy at a, like 60. Nice. So then as I'm leaving there, uh, my agent calls and says, hey, you got, a, you got a trial with the Rams um, next week. And the Rams, like, don't do a mini camp. They did. I was like, all right, once again, it's my only option. I'm, I'm in. I, right. I'll go. Um, so most, like, the, the Raiders, it was like a three-day mini camp. Oh, I got a good story for there, too. You want to hear that quick? It's pretty fun. Go for it. Go for it. I know you got a great uh, – John Gruden impression, Kluver, so you might need to give me a little voiceover. But, I haven't done it in a while. Um, I done it in a while, it, but I can pull it, it out. It's a, it's a third day. <laughs> it's, the, it's, the th- it's the third day of camp. Or it's the hey, second day. Of, no, it's the third day of camp before we go out in the field, and, and Gruden's putting up some uh, some examples of, like, hard work and, like, effort stuff, right? Spider two eye banana, huh? Yeah, a little, <laughs> a little bit of that voice. And uh, – so all of a sudden, my name pops up on the on the. He's putting name and then the clip from practice that he likes, right? Wow. All of a sudden, my name, my last name, pops up on the screen, but instead of saying Jake, it says Jack. And he he puts my name up there. He's like, Jack Gervas, man, this is the effort we need right here. And I'm sitting there like, I don't want to say, hey, my name's Jake, but like this dude didn't even know my first name. And he puts no. up a clip of me, like, running down a receiver. But he, he keeps saying Jack. He's like, that's Iowa tough right there. Jack, you're <laughs> uh, I, You know what, man? I yeah, tell, really proud of you, Jack. I tell you what, man. I tell you what, man. This guy, Jack Gervas, man. Yeah, I'm like, dude, just get my name right at least. Jack Gervas, man, out of Iowa, the Hawkeyes, Gervais. you know, 2015. You Gervais Gervas. Gervais Gervas. You, uh, they didn't need to learn it until I started doing anything, man. That's the Coach Wall story. Um, so yeah, that was a funny story, but leave there, uh, end up going to, to LA the following week. They don't do a mini camp. They did a 45 minute workout on the field. Wow. That was it. It was individual drill, two special teams drills. Um, and you know, I must've done something right because I was, I was the only one they signed out of, out of that tryout. And, uh, so I, I got signed. You were the miracle dude. Everybody oh, talks about those tryouts is, you know, you got to hit a miracle. Yeah, and you even talk like he, my safety coach all year. He'd be like, "Like we we just brought people in because we have to. We weren't planning on signing anybody." Um, so I just got super lucky with that, where I, I did well enough in that tryout where they signed me back. Um, and then yeah, I was I I went home. So that tryout was on like a Friday. I went home Friday night, back to Iowa, packed my bags, and went back to LA LA on Sunday. That's for OTAs. Nuts. That's nuts. Yeah, at I got that, so lucky. At that point, what are you guaranteed? You you so get that, at, yeah. At that point, you're you're guaranteed. You're technically never guaranteed anything, right. but unless you do something stupid or you get you get hurt, like you're you're gonna be on the team through OTAs, which was five weeks of practice and lifting, like four days a week. Had weekends off and stuff out in LA, and uh, um, OTAs is actually pretty fun. I mean, it's a lot of learning and learning new defense and meeting new guys and stuff. But yeah, you're you're guaranteed through that OTA, you know, span. Okay. The so you go through OTAs, and I I mean you do well. Obviously, had to have. Yep. What was the and that was around what time? That was like. It was a. Uh, it's all of May and half of June. Yeah, so. yeah, May and June, right? Yeah, so I went out early May, and then I, I got back June June 14th was when I, I came back to – you get like a, a month and a half break before camp. And do they tell you – is there a is there a is there a group of guys who are in OTAs that don't come to camp, or do, do basically everybody come to camp? I think everybody came back but like one guy, okay. one rookie or something. So, yeah, if you're, if you're healthy, they're going to bring you back for camp at the end of July. And at that point, it's just how many cuts can I last? Well, now there's only one cut. Oh, that's true. Yeah. But at so, that point, so, so going back into camp, I knew it was going to be a long shot for me to make the active roster because it, they had a good amount of vets. Um, they drafted two safeties in my class. You're white. Like, yeah, I'm white and slow and stiff. 
and from, uh, from Iowa. From Iowa, yeah. And uh, so I knew it was going to be a long shot for me to make that for the roster, but my goal the whole time was practice squad. I was yeah. like, I'm going to do everything I can to make a practice squad. And I got – the reason I say I got so lucky is because L.A. – is one of few teams we don't we don't play our starters in the preseason at all. Like if you're if you're a starter, even like a really good two, like you don't dress for a single game in the preseason. Wow. So as a young guy, as a rookie, shout out McVay. Make, shout out McVay. The way to make a team, the way to, to get on any team is to to get film. Mm-hmm. So I I was fortunate enough where I got a bunch of reps um, in our preseason, and I stayed healthy and I, I played pretty well, and uh, they ended up. They basically told me, you know, we're I got cut. I was expecting to get cut. It still sucks. Doesn't make it any easier. Um, How's that? Cut. How's that go? Oh, hey, dude, hey. it sucked. Tell you what, man, Jake <laughs> Ross, I gotta talk to you, man. Yeah, uh, they get they give you a call, and I was in the building. They're like, yeah, we're gonna bring you in here. Um, then they sit you down, and they give you a piece of paper of like who you can go talk to. Everybody signs off, and then some. Everyone's got a different conversation. My conversation was, um. We're, we're going to cut you. We're going to cut another guy. If this guy gets picked up, we're going to sign you to the practice squad. And once again, I got lucky enough where that guy got picked up by another team. And I got a call the next day saying, hey, we're going to – I was actually at my boy Austin Blythe's house. He he took care of me out there. I was chilling at his house doing some laundry. And, Shout out uh, Austin Blythe. Just had a second baby. He did. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So uh, got, a, got a call the next day saying, yep, we're going to sign you to the practice squad. And got – Got signed to the practice squad, and I was, you know, one of 63 that that survived from a, starting at like 90. Wow, that is. It's called get lucky, boys. Dude, how many how many uh, genies lamps did you rub over yeah, the course of the summer to actually uh, create this story? Just like any, just like any time Kevin Kevin or I got an interception in Iowa. Coach Parker would always say, you know, every once in a while, a blind squirrel finds a nut. That's, <laughs> that's my life story right now. Kevin finds a nut. All right, I'm not going to go any further than that. <laughs> Write a um, book about it. Yeah. <laughs> we, so, you know, we should we should have made a book of Coach Parker's quotes because we could make a killing off that. Oh, yeah, that was, I that remember. Was, uh, shit, one year David Tan was just writing them down in, the, uh, in his in his notebook. He had like at least three pages long of just Coach Parker quotes, and that was that was the notes he took during uh. And you could sell it during meetings. We Dude, could have made. It. I was a freshman, and Coach Parker used to go up in front of meetings. I would sometimes get chills because I was so terrified. <laughs> I was terrified of Coach Parker, and it's then by the bad. time. By the time it was our fifth year, I like thought of Coach Parker as a teddy bear. Like if I needed a hug, I was going to Coach Parker. No, you weren't. Yeah, I, I swear, that. dude. I you, swear God. to you. You probably I swear can't to you. you. No, I don't know. I don't know. You two, you, you two say no, but I actually, I feel like I remember because of your you being on the offense and like towards the end, I think you did kind of have a Me relationship. Coach Parker had a great relationship, yeah. dude. I talked to him all the time in the most friendly manner. Yeah, I would. Okay, I, but you're not like going to him for a hug. All right. Don't, don't. Well, it was either going to be him or Wallace. I was going to hug one of them. Wallace would be a good hug. There's a lot of, to grip there. He's a good dude. Um, <laughs> Just an unnecessary shot right there. <laughs> well, <laughs> with all the backhanded compliments that that man gave me over. Yeah, honestly, Tuesday. Kevin, that's not unnecessary at all. That's fully fucking warranted now Gervas, you could be a dude okay you could be a dude you could be a dude all right need some dogs here gotta have some dogs you know it's the dog will this is? versus the one it's a caucasian mountain dog go look it up <laughs> oh, man. I still that's got the type of dogs binder. we need out there Real gumba. that's Gervas. that's not a binder that's a bible yeah, I still got that Bible downstairs. I'm gonna use it when I'm coaching high school football. I also <laughs> still have, I also still have the the punt playbook uh, down it. in my thing. Um, so you're on the practice squad. What? So during the season, what does that look look like? You're, you know, I I hear that it's a pretty good life. Yeah, it's it's a good little gig. You're, uh, I mean, obviously you're a part of the team. You're in all meetings. You're at practice. All that good stuff. You're on you get no reps on the actual defense. You're, you're on the scout team defense, given, given looks. Um, ours, our, our system is pretty laid back. So we had game Sunday, come in Monday, um, lift and run, uh, and a little bit of film Tuesdays are off day, Wednesday, Thursday, were like our long days. You got to walk through a practice, bunch of meetings. 
Um, Friday is like a, a quick, easy, fast Friday. And then Saturday is a, a really, really fast walkthrough. So if you're, you're on the practice squad, um, you know, week away games, weekends, you, you got Saturday and Sunday off. And then for home games, we'd sit in the press box and stuff. So it was, it was a good deal. I mean, it's just the hard thing is the NFL season is so long. It's long. It's, it's so not long. over. Yeah. Three weeks of the preseason or three weeks of camp four weeks of the preseason you're already at seven weeks and you haven't even played a game yet. And then you got 16 regular season games. So it was, it was a good deal. Um, didn't, didn't think I was ever going to get a chance to get, get called up, but one thing led to another and uh, ended up getting called up to the, the active roster week, week seven. And how was that? What was that call? Like it was nice. It was, I mean, I felt bad because the Did reason you have to throw was, that pair of underwear away or. <laughs> uh yeah I, just, I might have i don't know but <laughs> but yeah it was a, a safety got hurt week six um kind of messed up his shoulder pretty bad and there's there's talks of you know he's gonna get put on ir and i was the only safety on the, the practice squad and obviously they could sign someone from somewhere else but um i had a pretty good relationship with the safety's coach pretty good relationship with our special teams coach and you know throughout that week there's talks of me getting brought up and then Saturday, the day before we're in Atlanta, the day before the game, um, say the, the special teams coach comes up to me like while we're rolling out, and he's like, "He's like, get ready to go." I'm kind of like, because at that point, I, and your I, wiener I, got a little hard. Well, just a smidge. I mean, it's still not that big, but yeah. And uh, <laughs> at that point, I had been told it's not going to happen. It was like this week's probably not going to happen. Maybe next week. So then when he comes up to me, I'm like, "All right, like let's let's get after it." So then I left. Left a uh, DB meeting, and when I left the end of the DB meeting, was, you know, the vice president was sitting outside with, you know, pen and paper, and I signed that w- little white line, and I was a part of the 53-man roster. Dude, and your and your and your check got fatter, fatter. Yeah, you just got a smidge fatter. So got was, a smidge now. Exactly now, Jake. How now? How many? Could you write it down? How many zeros? fatter because I this is personal research that I need for how much fatter the did the check get and how much am I missing out on um <laughs> let's say I was getting one California's a bitch taxes are tough dude hey welcome to the real world because taxes are tough yeah Boys. Let's, say I was, let's say I was getting on the P squad I was getting one piece of pizza okay on the active roster I was getting four Four mm. pieces of pizza now. Okay. You're eating good pizza. So All I right. Went from, I, went from a, I went from a fourth. You take a big pizza, you cut it into four. So I was getting one slice. And then at the and end, then was, you were getting the whole, whole pizza. You were eating that, the pizza. Incidentally, eating. that is how I ate Jack's frozen pizzas during college. Mm. And I never ate just one fourth of the pizza. Yeah, so I was I was, was happy with my entire pizza. Yeah. I was happy with my fourth, but I was still hungry, you know? Right. Right. And, and then once I got to eat the whole pie, it's like, it's a good time. Let's see if I can keep <laughs> fooling these people. Cause I don't may- know what, yeah. I don't know what they're thinking, but I'm going to keep fooling the world. Maybe somehow. order, maybe order two pizzas at some point. Which would we'll be, see. I mean, that would be crazy. beggars can't be choosers, but that dog will hunt. What, <laughs> what this podcast is legendary. What the fuck do we talk about from here? I don't know. Kevin, oh. I want to know your thoughts on how long that NFL season takes and how much football how, – how, how good does that much football sound to you? Why are you asking me? <laughs> I just feel like you would be one of the guys that would just really hate that much football for that I mean, time. Yeah, you guys were in the locker room with me. Like, I'm fragile. I'm frail. By week eight, I'm like – Small ankles. I'm oh, like Kevin I'm like, just- I'm like your grandma. So I'm like a little bitch. It's so <laughs> painful. Wow. And the other thing about Coach Kevin- Parker would always be like, "You look like my fucking mom with those stiff ankles." <laughs> <laughs> the other thing about Kevin is that as the season progresses, he gets exponentially more irritable, and oh, there is no absolutely. reversal. Seasonal depression. You, you get to week twelve, and you think Kevin is, oh. Just not in a good place mentally or physically. With <laughs> I those still knees. don't think he's in a good place mentally. Uh, the, the look he had when we, he flipped the on the camera. He showed up to this podcast. Oh, my God. Kev, you want to shed some light on what you've been doing? I got about two hours of sleep last night. I, you know. Did you party hard? Oh, yeah, so we, we FaceTimed we, you two nights ago and you were partying. 
Yeah, so we had our national sales meeting down in San Antonio. So Which means you did nothing but party on their dollar. No, absolutely quite the contrary. We are in meetings all day, every day, and then, you know, at night we could do whatever we wanted. And so we're a bunch of young professionals in uh, different cities. We're like, we're going to go to the river walk. And young we, professionals. Yeah, young professionals. Who was, who was the baby face guy that was talking shit to me on FaceTime? <laughs> that was my boss. <laughs> Interesting. Boss needs to watch his tone, bulls. <laughs> Javon's got to hear in the league now. He's a vet. He's telling people to watch their fucking mouth. He said, he said, he said, I'm full. I ate four pieces. I ate four pieces of pizza, boy. I'm I never said I was full. And I, I got some energy. And get I, got it. I got a little video. energy. Hey, Jake, tell him why you FaceTime me. Oh, my gosh. We're playing this game called Buzz. It's like a drinking game where you pull a card and it's got like a, a prompt on it. And the prompt was – uh, who, whoever can do the best horse impression, give out a drink. And Haley uh, and Kevin and the other roommates had played this game before. And right away, Haley and Mariah are like, yeah, like Kevin's horse impressions, like unbelievable. And I'm like, all right, let's FaceTime him. So like he's at this conference drinking and it's super loud. And we're like, Kevin, you got to do it. He's like, I can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah. And also he puts his phone like super closely. He does it. It's unbelievable. Kevin. Kevin. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the stallion lives. It's incredible. Kevin, you are nice. a specimen. Oh, my God. So we, all, we all raised our glasses and took a drink in Kevin's honor. That's incredible. <laughs> it's good enough. So, it's a fun game. God, we're, our, we're an hour in, and there's so much. This podcast is stupid. We're stupid. <laughs> yeah, dumb. I'm like, I got to get going soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, one more question that I want to bring it back to football with. Yep. You're, you're now one rookie season in. At this point, what does what's your mindset moving forward? Because it's back to that walk-on mentality, that, that hashtag W-O-M. Yeah. For sure. Where do you where do you go from here? What's the goal? You got you, you can't feel. I mean, even the best guys in the NFL, they never feel good about their spot. It's a business. What what's the no, I, talk about that? Yeah, I mean, I have no shame in admitting that every year I'm going to be fighting not just for a 53 man spot. I'm going to be fighting for a 63, like even the yeah. practice squad. So I've got I've got no shame in you know the route I'm going to have to take and what I'm going to have to do um in order to make a roster make a team and be a part of a team in some way so it's I mean that's that's tough because you know my future is very unknown like you said I'm getting married and by that time next year we'll be Haley and I will be married and we'll have to figure some stuff out but hopefully she'll come wherever I'm at, I'm at is the plan but it's just you just got to keep find a way to keep getting better I mean I've got a lot of things I can work on, um, you know, got some feedback from the coaches on what, what I need to do and what, what needs to happen for me to, you know, be a contributor next year and make the team some way or somehow. So it just comes down to just stay in shape, work on your weaknesses and, and be ready to, uh, you know, take advantage of any opportunity I get. So I'm, I'm super stoked to be, you know, finished on the 53-man the roster, which means I don't have to sign a future contract or anything. I'm, I'm with the Rams. I'll be with the Rams in OTAs. Huge. And, yeah, huge, and hopefully just just stay healthy and you know try to do what I've done in the past, which is when I get an opportunity, try to take advantage of it and see what happens. So it's it's stressful, but at the same time, it's it's what I, I've signed up for. And if I can, you know, like I said, I'm just going to try to keep fooling these people, find find a way to you know stick around, whether it's with the Rams or I want to stay with the Rams. That'd be awesome. I love love the coaches, love the organization, but uh, just just find a way to stick around and keep playing football for as long as I can. You guys getting your dope new facility. I know. Well, the thing is, the, the stadium's going to be insane. I mean, the stadium will be done next year. They haven't even bought the land for uh, the facility yet, which is crazy. Because stuff, oh. stuff is so expensive. Like, land is so absurd out there to buy. And right now, like, we're basically in, like, a temporary facility because the Rams, have, they've only been out in L.A. three years. It was kind of on short notice. So the facility we're in now is, like, I mean, it's nice. It gets the job done, but it's nothing compared to, you know, even – to what Iowa's got or other teams in the NFL. So it'll be, it'll be interesting to see because, I mean, they got to buy, buy that land before they even start, start building it. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. There you go. Over an hour of 
true washed up walk ons content. One that's just trying to keep people from realizing that he's washed up. We, as much as we hate to say it, we're proud of you. We're proud as a walk on podcast from Iowa. I already told him I'll allow him to claim the 563 now because yeah. I'm doing it proud. I used to tell him that he wasn't from the 563 because the real 563 is Muscatine. Shout out. Uh, but I, I let him I let him claim part of it now because Kevin, are you proud of your son? Yeah. Jake, you know how much I fucking hate complimenting you, but mm. doing good and I'm proud of you and motherfucker. <laughs> and, and, hey boy. Nah, I, man, you know we love you. I know, keep keep I, going at it. I, I appreciate it. You know, us us walk ons are a different breed, so it's it's uh I feel honored to be a part of you know, the squad. You're, you're at the top. You're repping the walk-on at the top. We need some oh. Jake Gervas merch, and I'll buy it. I've got a long ways to go, boys, but I'm going to do my best to keep making you proud. All right. Well, we appreciate you joining the show, and you're going to yeah, come It was on. actually more fun than I thought it was going to be, so I, I'll be back. You know, I you guys, it was a good time hanging out with you All right. Guys. Well, all the shit we just guy. said, actually. You know what it is, me. guy. I could have ended on a positive. Now I had oh to throw a quick jab. God. All right. Well. Get the fuck off our podcast. So you guys will never hear from Jake again, but hopefully hopefully you enjoyed today's show. Kevin got to finally be a part of it and added some mm. some actual good stuff, which I guess means Drake and I will probably keep him around. See, like, you guys like go around in that group text and then it gets quiet. I'm like, they're probably just talking to each other now, just finding ways to get me off this fucking thing. And, you know, I'm just, I just wish they'd get it over with already. Just, like, just kick me off. Please. Yeah, this young, we, we got this young professional, a part of our podcast, so we just can't have it anymore. Uh, yeah. um, that's it. Number 85. It was a good one. Over an hour of, of Jake Gervas, Rams, Hawkeyes content. Oh. Hope you all have a fantastic Thursday or Friday when you listen to this and a fantastic weekend. That's it for the walk-ons. We're out. On Iowa. Rest in peace, Kobe.